Hey, what's up? It's Brooks. Briefly staying the weekend with my little brother Tristan here and this white Muppet who will not leave my arm alone. So, uh, new series. You've already seen a couple of times I've put up uh, critiques. Uh, these are the Patreon Novice Bard tier critiques from viewers like you who are patrons over there. Uh, this is critiques of character design, art, uh, things that can just totally help you level up your work. Um, deciding to make it a weekly installment here on Weekend Mornings. And of course, if you'd like a critique of your own, you can go to patreon.com slash bageldenizen. And it's completely optional whether or not it's shared publicly. Uh, these folks have just elected to do that. Of course, these videos are made specifically for the person that they are intended for, but we have a lot that we can learn from them even if we aren't that person. So those people this week are both HeroCat and Veili. Uh, HeroCat for a while has been wanting his video to go public, so I'm glad to indulge that. Uh, he has a couple things to work on as far as construction and uh, dimension in his character designs, and also something that I'm calling a claustrophobia of proportions. So watch this critique to see why that makes sense. Bailey is struggling with her rendering and shading, and so I provided a couple of solutions and things to work on, um, some of them that might not actually seem that obvious. So without further ado, here's this week's critiques. Hey there, Hero Cat. Thanks for uh, being willing to do this. Thanks for being a patron. Uh, I pulled up the art that you submitted here, uh, and there's a couple things I wanted to talk about. So uh, right off the bat, the strongest piece that you you submitted to me here is obviously going to be this fox, um, and there's quite a few reasons for that. So one of the primary ones is, uh, and sort of we'll compare and contrast a little bit with, with the rest of your work here to just kind of give you some things to work on uh, in the future. Um, but what I like a lot about this fox is, so apart from um, you've got a nice sense of realistic lighting with the yellow coming in from the left here, um, and a nice, you know, kind of blue shade coming down here of the shadow. Um, what I like about it the most is that you've got a, a nice sense of distinct shapes for each part of the character. And they're, um, they're semi-realistic stylized shapes, right? Like the arms are tapering down the way that we expect them to. Um, we have some nice segmentation uh, between each of these pieces, like the, you know, the, the muzzle area, the... Uh, ears and head and everything, but even then the, the hat adds a nice segmentation right between the ears and the rest of the head. So it breaks down really nice. And so um, one main thing that that I wanted to talk about with the rest of your art uh, with that in mind is the idea of sort of separating these shapes out. And from a design perspective, um, you want to make sure that things are viable, right? And so sort of looking at this character, the way that this one is structured, um, it sort of feels like a little bit of a sense of claustrophobia, if that makes sense. So you have uh, a head that's starting out just as a sphere like this, and then that sphere is immediately sort of embedded to where the shoulders are, and then the arms aren't really being given a huge amount of room to breathe, right? So what you've been able to do over here is add this head, right? This head that's in kind of multiple sections of of shapes. Uh, then even with the collar, which, you know, same same kind of collar between these two, even with the collar, you get a sense that the neck tapers down. There's sort of some distance before you hit shoulders. And so the viability of this character over here is kind of reduced because if we were to look at them from straight on, we get the idea that they're shaped a little bit like this, right? And so properly executed in sort of a chibi style, um, it's possible to make this work well. Um, but like I'm saying from a design perspective, it, it would be great to have some more breaks. Um, specifically, both between, between these two characters, um, a sense of just some extra shapes in the head. Right, and it doesn't have to be extravagant, but uh, say you kind of built an extra piece onto the bottom like that. Um, now you've kind of freed yourself up a little bit, and then it's all about a little bit of a sense of, of contrast with large and small shapes as you kind of transition between them. Otherwise, you get something like this where um, there's a couple of things that we'll keep talking about um, that are happening with this, but uh, yeah, I'd, I'd try and, and break those up a little bit. Okay. Um, 
another big thing that even is present here in the fox is uh, a sense of very flat shapes. Um, and I actually just put up a video about uh, fighting the flat, which talks about construction and constructing your characters out. Um, and it's something I'd suggest for you to, to kind of look into um, because there are, especially down here, and, and some of it is, is rendering based with, with this character, um, you get a sense of each of these, the pieces of this character being very flat, right? Um, with, with all of them, there's, there's a lack of sort of dimensionality where things are coming out at you. Um, and you'd mentioned uh, perspective as one of the things that you're trying to work on. Uh, whether it's something that you're doing intentionally uh, or unintentionally, there are no, we don't really see the feet here, right? In any of these. Um, and these, these images are, are fairly zoomed in. And what I'd like to see from you is just some exercises, right? So where you're, say you take your, your Fox character here and you did a turnaround where, so you, you take what you have already as sort of the, the front face on view, uh, but then you, you do the side and, and get a good understanding of sort of what he looks like, he or she. Right, and, and figure out what those shapes are and then move into the three quarter view. Um, and one of the things I talk about in that fight the flat uh, video is uh, setting up a ground plane for your characters that's that's basically perspective, right? Um, that's just sort of a shorthand for perspective and laying the feet there and building up from that point. Um, and that'll help you to kind of, so with something like this character here, let's do a little bit of a draw over. Um, Actually, right before the draw over, I wanted to say about this character, because we're about to hide it the, the way I was drawing this. Um, the way that you've rendered this is actually kind of uh, reinforcing or kind of hurting that idea of flat shapes. Uh, because you've gone with the colored line art, and there's several areas where um, the line art, which is supposed to kind of be a little bit of a rest, and the shapes that it's defining or, or kind of the fill inside should be a little bit more vibrant um, in value. Uh, you've got some areas where it's blue and, and lighter, uh, and lighter lines tend to, to make this even harder. Um, so now, even if you had sort of defined this this out with some dimensionality, right, um, then you'd, you'd still have uh, very flat looking shapes because of the lines. Um, and with this, I would just say that um, you're almost there with the, the way that this should lay out here. Let's try, we'll do two draw overs. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we're gonna lay down this skull here like this, right? Um, but then adding this line down here, uh, this the position of the muzzle here is a little bit, it's drifting from the eyes. So we either wanna move the eyes over or we wanna move the muzzle. Um, and if you're thinking about this in, in terms of 3D shapes, uh, it won't be intimidating to draw it uh, from any angle, really, because you just kind of rotate the model. Um, and whether if that's because you need to, uh, or need or in order to achieve that, you need to draw it from several different angles to kind of figure it out and study it, uh, you know, you can, you can do that. Or if it means uh, because you kind of have a better understanding of it, or you create a 3D model yourself. Okay, so now the eyes kind of fit where this all lays down, um, and this ear can kind of come over here. Now, the placement of everything makes a lot more sense, right? And so you're, it's all about creating the illusion of depth, and unfortunately, uh, one sort of little thing can can cause the depth to go away. I don't think this eye is in the quite right place. Anyhow, I wanted to move on to the other character. Okay, so let's drop the opacity on this guy. And I'm just gonna do a quick, you know, not, not a super thorough draw over here, but if we were th thinking of, okay, um, our perspective is coming in where uh, maybe our point of perspective is about here, Right, so from here, all these lines are sort of radiating out. And perspective seems intimidating until you realize that, um, especially in a stylized realm, you can, 
you can get away with a little bit of, of fudging, um, although I would advise you to, to kind of figure it out the, the right way to do it. Okay, so we've got a line here that defines our ground plane, right? And it's also, we've got a line here and here, and we're just cutting a little piece of it. Okay, and get rid of this guy. Now we can lay our, our feet down and the, the tapering limbs I would just be a little bit careful of because it's hard for them to um, either come together or it's hard to, to strike really cool poses because uh, the legs inevitably kind of bump up into each other. So let's try something like this. I'm going kind of backwards here, um, but I, I know where my feet should be landing. So that's, that's already helpful. And then we come up here with a head and not really knowing too much about proportion we're gonna we're gonna bend this arm because it's it's sort of more naturally what he would be doing if he was kind of turning around like what like a car's pulling up behind him or something right we'll give him a line of action like this down to the hips he or she again sorry hopefully that's not detracting from the point uh, we'll give a little bit of a neck area or something, uh, or at least show it underneath this because we've got a, a large head and a thin neck area or a short neck area, right? So we want it to... That's all kind of general, and I'm getting too much into details anyway. Um, but then this arm can be wrapping this way. And now we kind of define, all right, we want this hand to be closer. want this one to be also oversized but because it's farther from the you know where we're looking at it or the camera it's going to be smaller that's just foreshortening right and now uh, we can add like sort of a, a ridge line here for the eyes and we'll ignore for the moment that idea of adding extra shapes onto the sort of the base of the head here although the way that a human skull works talked about this before it's not just a, a simple uh, sphere like this you actually if you're looking at it from the side you get this extra flat plane off of the front and so if you're looking at a character um, from a three-quarter view like this you're always going to have this kind of protrusion down of the jaw and then some skull sticking out the back uh, it's pretty similar for animal characters although um, a lot of animals are kind of more in this shape right um, but you can do the same and because you're anthropomorphizing and and giving human characteristics you can you can kind of do the same thing so that maybe there's some more out the back right or out the front with the skull okay um, but even from here right you kind of get the idea that here's where our perspective is 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 landing us um, just generally uh, I would also just give a little bit more room for the eyes to breathe. We're kind of getting into stylized stuff here or, or style choices. Um, but currently the, the eyes, I can't get enough of an emotional read from the way that they are. So maybe either they're either adding in sort of the whites of the eyes um, or just some more um, musculature or this domino mask in the sockets around the eyes. If that makes sense. Okay. Um, so all suggestions, it's, it's not all stuff you have to incorporate immediately or, you know, take as, as, as law. Um, but hopefully that tackles sort of the, the ideas you're going for. Um, and I would really push yourself to zoom out the camera a bit and work on, uh, this structural stru stuff. And, and if you're afraid of it, or if, if it's, it kind of gets you down because you don't, you know, get it right, or it's, it's hard or slow at first, um, don't let that like stop you because uh, as soon as you get into comics and telling stories and stuff, you're going to have to um, be able to, uh, you know, rotate characters, tell things, tell the story from different angles, pose them, and um, show expression, you know, like have them emote and express too. So just think of it all as building up toward that purpose for you um, if the academic aspect of it is intimidating or, or sort of boring sounding. Um, hopefully that helped. Let me know if you have any questions. And thank you again. Take care, Hero Cat.
Hey there, Valley. Uh, Valley. Not quite sure how to say that. Pronounce it properly. Uh, thanks for being a patron. Thanks for being uh, willing to do a critique. So I've assembled some of your work here. Um, one of the things that you mentioned was uh, shading as something that you're aiming to fix, or you're you know you're you're not too happy with right now, and you'd like to improve. So I've assembled a little bit of your work here. Um, some really nice stuff. I really like this uh, this Hamilton work that you started. Um, looking forward to seeing how that that sort of finishes out. Big uh, Hamilton fan here in or fans really in uh, my household. So one thing that I want to talk about, um, I'll get to some shading uh, advice and things that that can kind of help. Um, but one thing that shading, having problems shading is a symptom of is actually not understanding the dimensions and forms of the thing that you're drawing, right? So one thing that I want to just kind of point out with the work that you have here is that there's a bit of an issue with uh, how flat things come across, right? So let's get over to sort of our correction brush here. Um, looking at sort of the, the body, we have something that's, that's fairly, it's starting to get three-dimensional, right? Um, we're sort of seeing it, it's, it's fairly flat, but there's at least an attempt there to, to keep it a little bit rotated. And then we get up to a face that's completely, right? Like we're looking at exactly a profile with this head here. Um, something similar down here with this face, right? We're just cutting right into the side. Um, not that this is a bad thing, but I think it's uh, a sign uh, of sort of something that might be a weakness for you, which is constructing these uh, head shapes with with three dimensions, right? Um, coming down to this face here, there's it's still a little bit flat, but you've kind of managed to um, turn just a little bit toward the camera from the profile, right? You have a little bit of this this eye coming out on this side, which is really helpful because now you've sort of tricked us into thinking that there's dimension there. Um, tricking, of course, being what every good artist does, right? The setting up the illusion properly. Um, and then, of course, with the Hamilton work here, we have a three-quarter view for this face. We have a straight-on view for this face. And um, this face up here isn't, isn't bad, uh, looking over the, the shoulder. But, of course, again, it's a little bit of a profile, right? Um, with just a tiny turn of the head. So let's go to the example that you gave here where um, things are sort of the the most dimensional, right? Um, and from here, let's let's turn a new layer on. I'm just gonna try really quickly to, let's see. We'll come over top here. It's not gonna be super pretty, but I'm gonna, gonna take a, an airbrush here, uh, come in over top of a good amount of our subject, right? I'm gonna turn this to multiply. And let's see, let's get it a little bit darker. A little less saturated like that, right? And then we can come in, we'll get, uh, let's see, let's grab my, It. this isn't necessarily super important. This is just a pastel brush, so it's kind of, uh, you know, it's middle of the range, soft and hard, right? So now I'm coming in and because you've given me a good amount of info with the forms, I can start cutting away um, where I think light is going to be, right? So, I think there's light hitting the forehead, probably right at the tip of the nose, and a good amount of this too, we'll blend it in there. Um, and sort of what you want to do when you're, you're shading and adding, you know, this really what is just you're adding a visual to the dimension that should all already be there in the work. Um, it's it's hard to take something that's flat like this. This uh, can you even see that? Yeah, you can. Um, and and add too much to it because it you know things are flat. Um, let's uh, same with the cheeks like this. And what we'll do is we could do this additively, but we're just doing it by you know subtractively. Um, there's it's kind of a, a personal choice and maybe a, a practical reason why you would choose either. Um, but see, we're just kind of cutting in here. And of course, the red is really intense right now because we want to make sure we know where our, our uh, light is coming. Do some right here. We'll do some translucence through the back of the ear because it's, you know, it usually happens, light comes through. And 
that's a good amount, uh, maybe just a little bit of light inside of the eye right here. Okay, so quick and dirty. Um, and let's just do like some, some streaks through here. We don't want it to be so intense. And we want it to kind of flow with the hair a little bit. So all, everything I just did, we could have done by adding light and color, right? So it's messy. But look what's ha what happens when I lower the opacity there down to uh, maybe 30% or so. And maybe I um, can even blur, you know, I can add some blur to it very sparingly um, to sort of shore up some of those really hard lines. Um, and the key thing here being that, you know, the eye socket casts a shadow, right? Um, the cheek here is casting over the, the rest of this. So you could continue to kind of cut away and maybe you, you know, change the opacity that you're cutting with. But now that you've got those hard shapes out, you can move on. And it's the same in the other direction. You can either start with a lot of, you know, a flat shading layer and cut into it. You can start with the base and add light or add shadow, right? We could, we could have come in with our red and added on top of it. Um, but that's definitely, that requires knowing sort of the planes of the face. And so it would be helpful for you if you kind of came in with, let's see, with, uh, you know, a sort of, you started with the, the box of the head, right? And, and figured out, okay, you've already got the profile down. So how do those things break down into, you know, the, the flat plane of the nose and everything just, and where does, how does light affect it? If, if light's coming from this direction, you know, what shadow is being cast? Is it being cast into this eye here, here a little bit, uh, over on this cheek? Is it, you know, overexposed on this cheek, stuff like that. Um, and that's a life drawing thing that uh, practice can help with. But I think that's, you know, understanding that's going to be key for you. Um, and the same with, you know, just uh, drawing heads in the first place, not necessarily shading them, but, but understanding, okay, you've got a skull. So uh, the character here is a little bit, a little bit flat. So, you know, if, if you were going to add this skull here, you'd, you'd probably want this jaw to come out just a little bit further like that uh, to really sell it um, but that's generally what you've what you get with uh, with heads you, you start with a circle you can add sort of a box uh, midway through and uh, continue on by adding in you know the eye line the eye line is going to meet up with the ear adding in some some mouth and everything but that's kind of going to be the touchstone for you and I say I, I I harp on practicing drawing the head so much just because it's a complex object. It's something that we very readily uh, recognize, right? And it's something that, um, because we recognize it, uh, appears off uh, immediately, whether it's in something that's been photoshopped or in a drawing, right? So hopefully that's helpful for you. Um, hopefully that covers a little bit of your, your shading woes. It doesn't necessarily need to be about technique. It just has to be about understanding your subject. Um, and hopefully that'll help you as you go forward. Looking forward to seeing the rest of your work, especially at a Hamilton thing. I'd, I'd like to see how that ends up for you. Take care. Thanks a lot, Vaili.